Good morning. How are you? So, I can do many things, but unfortunately, I'm all out of rockets, so or stinger missiles, so I can't take down that helicopter. And uh, seeing as how this is going to be a yoga class, they really are mucking it up. But I suppose they have, I don't know, O.J. Simpson to try and follow down the motorway or something like that. But anyway, we're going to get into a very simple uh, yoga routine. I know I have a pillow and uh, a roller here, but I'm probably going to make it so that you don't actually even need this. Uh, I'm just keeping them in case I change my mind about something. So. Uh, this is going to be 50% of a yoga class and 50% of more of a stretching class. So starting off, I'm sure everybody is familiar with this sort of a pose. So your back leg is pointing all the way uh, stiffly back uh, behind you in a straightened line. Uh, your feet should be separated out. They should not be in a line together. <coughs> And this time, rather than focusing on our watch, we're going to be focusing on our breathing. So we're going to count the, uh, the breaths. So our, each exercise is going to go for about five to ten breaths. So inhale, and then when you exhale, you press slightly deeper into whatever stretch you are focusing on. At the same time, try to relax all the muscles so your muscles that are working in your balance don't tense up on them as much. You want to try and keep your body as um, loose as possible. This should all be relaxing. I've got a morning coffee there. By the time you watch this, though, it probably won't be the morning. It'll probably be game time. And I mean, Ireland is not going to be a particularly good match. I'm looking far more forward to the French game this, this weekend. And switch over to the other side. So again, focus on the breathing. things that bother you in life when you're trying to relax, particularly in sleep. There might be a noise, there might be a light, and it's a good habit to try and get into the mentality of learning how to, how to overcome that sort of thing and not getting, uh, not let it enforce whatever your mind is, not let it distract you, not get too focused on it. I know sometimes that's impossible. Anyway, back to the first pose. And you're raising the opposite hand to the knee that is in front and you are tilting to the side. Now here, you're allowed to tense up your front leg a little bit more to maintain balance because now we're getting into both stretching and to uh, strength in balancing. Mostly we're not. But some of them we are. This is going to be a half hour uh, class. Down back in and switch over. And so the thing that sort of makes this slightly different from a stretch and um, into more of a yoga thing is the movement from the, the poses. I know it's subtle and I used to disagree with it quite a lot, but since I got into more um, meditation and looking at more things about relaxation it sort of sets a tone for something it's sort of like if you walked into a, a modern art museum and with an attitude of this is stupid you wouldn't enjoy it as much as if you went in you were on a date with a girl who was into it you wanted to impress her so you didn't come in and just say this is all dog shit 
and he actually kind of looked at it from a different perspective because he went in with a different perspective. And because of that perspective, I made the helicopter go away. It was my will. Next, I'll get rid of the dog, and then this dog. Okay, now we're gonna move on, and we're gonna get down. And speaking of dog, we are gonna go into stretching out our hammies with down dog. I'm sure everybody, even if they don't know yoga, they know this one. So what we're aiming for here is we're trying to get our heels to the ground. We're not aiming to do it, we're just trying to do it. If you can, good on you. You probably know how to do this better than I can. Now, on the upper body, what we want to be focusing on is trying to get our, uh, the upper part of our shoulders to the earth as well. So, if you know your muscles, your traps, your trapezoids. So, these muscles up here, where everyone feels tension, and you know, someone comes over who doesn't really know how to massage, but they, they want to give you a little rub, and that's always the muscle they go for. It's always really nice. Okay, now, slowly down. Chin to the floor. Once we get to the floor, both the soles of the feet come in. Oh, for fuck's sake. Again, good example, try not to focus on what annoys you in life. And we're gonna press up and stretch out our back, mid back and lower back. And we're gonna tilt our heads over to one side. Yeah, coffee, you don't need that. You do not need that of all things in the world. <clears throat> and tilting your head over to the left hand side. Then bring your arms down, take a breath, inhale, and exhale as you press up, and tilt your head over the far side. Now, reset your feet, so now your toes are dug into the earth, and what we're gonna do is push up, which I believe is um, cobra pose, and then we're gonna go back into your down dog and I want you guys to do that for a little bit I'm just gonna get rid of the pools of this because the last thing that I do want is for her to lick any coffee press her off Garst Smells nice now. <clears throat> so focus on your breathing here. Deep breath in, get away from that. <clears throat> and exhale as you try to put your heels to the floor and your upper shoulders to the earth. Okay, and slowly forward again, drop the elbows down, nice and controlled, and then press up and relax back down again. Now, press back up, and left foot is going to come forward, right the way up, and then get it as high as you can. And then that little shimmy that I'm doing with my foot, get it right up so that your heel is in line with your left hand. Then you might need to do a little adjustment at the back. And then once you get it right, sole to the foot, facing up to heaven. And speaking of heaven, well, I hope they, um, they call it heaven, otherwise I'm uneducated with my religious studies. We're gonna pray to Mecca, so get the elbows Nice and close to the floor, and we're doing that sort of um, the Muslim touch the floor uh, praying move with a foot in the way. Sit 
same again. Deep breath in, and when you're breathing out, that's when you, I wouldn't, I, for want of a better phrase, go for the stretch. You should never be in discomfort. If you had a cup of coffee, you should always be allowed, or you should always be comfortable reaching over and having a lovely sip. <clears throat> and you should also be relaxed enough while doing all this that if your annoying dog runs over and knocks over the expensive coffee that your mother got you for Christmas one year, you can remain calm and zen. Now, moving back up, and what we are going to do is we are going to stretch into our hamstring. So, fingers to both sides. What I brought those over for is uh, if you need some support, uh, they usually have these things called blocks. That's what they do in, uh, in yoga classes. I have blocks, but um, I would use that sort of thing as a block. Uh, I, I don't want to use anything that you guys can't use at home for this sort of thing. So a mat, I suppose that's the extent of it, but you can make a mat. You could use a dressing gown or something like that. Now, what we're gonna do for this is you could use books if you, uh, if you can't stretch this deep where you put two books here like this. And frankly, if you don't have any books, then, I don't know, use your DVD collection. I'm running out of options for you. <coughs> now, we're going to focus on our hamstring for this. So we are leaning forward. If you lean upright and straight, what you would do is you would be stretching out your hip flexor <coughs> a lot more. We're gonna be focusing on our hamstring and specifically in the kind of the upper part of the hamstring, the hamstring that is closer to your arse. It's easy to get it lower in the midsection. We can do that by trying to touch our toes when we're standing up. stretch to become more intense again moving your ankle forward or your back knee further backward okay now from this position your back knee comes a little bit more straight so you can have the, uh, the ability to move and we are going to bring our leg to T so it is uh, not parallel perpendicular to our back leg. Your knee from your back leg should align with your ankle in your front foot. And again, if you need blocks for this sort of thing, you can put a block underneath your knee. I'm just using this as an example. Actually, no, it's more comfy like that, so I'm not gonna use it as an example. <coughs> and you are trying to press nice and easily down to the ground. So this one I can do with my left, um, foot, but I cannot do it with my right. Which apparently, according to my physio, uh, Katie Quinn, who's amazing, if you live in London, go to her, uh, she says that that could be a big issue, is the inflexibility of my right hip to why I ended up getting damage to my meniscus and why I ended up getting um, Achilles tendonitis all on my right leg. Okay, so next pose is something that you might know from yoga. Stop, stop, called pigeon pose. So with this one, we are pulling our ankle uh, backward. So if you can see here, it kind of wants to creep down this way and that's fine. So it's gonna look more like a sort of half of a V or more like a Y, thinking about it, without one, uh, without one of the three parts of the Y's um, lines cut out, capital Y. So same thing again, make sure that your back leg is aligned with your heel. But this time we're gonna go back to praying to Mecca and we are gonna try and get our hands forward. And you're aiming to get your belly to the earth this time. Now, if you're feeling pain in the side of your knee, uh, I wouldn't say you're doing it wrong, but try and change your angle around. This should be a stretch, not sore. It shouldn't feel like, um, have a sort of a bruising effect. 
So I got this on my right knee quite a lot, and I didn't pay it no heed, and I paid the cost for that. And again, focus on your breathing with this one. Relaxing on the inhale, or sorry, allowing your body to be a little bit tense and then trying to relax and push in at the same time. It seems counterproductive, but push something nice and gentle. Think of it like you're a ninja and you're trying to creep into a room. Push the door open gently. Make sure you are unheard when you are sneaking into the kitchen for a midnight snack that you're ashamed of. Okay. Now, raise yourself back up and we are gonna do the same exercise but on the far side. So again, some of you might be familiar with this sort of thing uh, if you've ever done yoga classes before. So, back foot remaining nice and strong and balanced. Knee comes up and then right the way into the air and sort of like you've got a, a scorpion stinger and we are just stretching out that hip flexor and we're going to hold this for five breaths back down and now what we are going to do is we are going to focus on our calf and our Achilles <coughs> on our foot that was just supporting us so the way we do that we cover over and just put some weight on our calf and then bend the knee slightly to get into our Achilles tendon it's better if you do this standing up, especially if you're heavy and really get in deep with it. But it's a nice way to just warm up nice and easy in case you're hungover. And then heel to the floor and then back down. Now, we do the same thing but with our other leg. So we're up, foot comes nice and Hi, try and flick it up as much as possible. You're not gonna hurt yourself in this position uh, from flicking it up. If you were upright and you were trying to kick high, you might, but not if you're on the ground. And same again, trying to get nice and down low. Pray to Mecca. So elbow, try to get the elbow to the heel. If you're able to do that, then push your hands further forward. Try to get your chest to the ground. And something that I find a lot of people think that they need to do, but uh, it's actually um, not your best bet, is they don't play with their stretch enough. So, you know, kind of going from different angles and play around. Think about how your body moves. We don't move like robots. So if you want to get down and do a stretch and kind of go a little bit this way and go a little bit that way, then do it. Again, this, uh, this particular class should be relaxing. So you can do in the morning with little thought, little focus. Okay, and I probably will need to pull up for this. Uh, just to show a different example, here's just a. Uh, Dressing gown. So again, I'm trying to keep with the idea of anyone can do this at home. You don't need equipment. I mean, mats, mats aren't too bad. And you might not even need the mat if you're doing this on a, a carpeted service. A duvet probably work. Blanket. So we do the same thing that we did before. 
getting our knee so it is in a T. Now, like I said, this knee is uh, my far less stretched knee. What is that? Don't distract. No, this is my moment. You'll have yours in a minute. And you know what, I need two more breaths, but I actually will show you while she's over here annoying me, um, going into pigeon pose. If you have a housemate who will get on your back and provide more weight, you can really get deeper into the stretch, which she might do. Oh. Again, it's better if you're extending your arms forward, but if she gets up on my back, nah, she's not. She's a useless partner. Ugh. All right, now it's better. So a small amount of weight can be done with a fingertip, just on the base of your back is best. <coughs> and you really, it's comfortable, it's not uncomfortable. It's the same sort of uh, feeling as if anyone has ever stretched your arms out from a, a wide position when you're sitting up. Or you could use her as a as a pillow and put all your weight on something rather than air. And now, same thing as we did before, going into that sort of scorpion pose. So, nice, tight base on your back foot. Stop. Knee comes forward, and then up, nice and high. And holding for five. And you can teeter off to the side as well. That's fine, you get deeper in from a different angle. And if she brings leads in your way, use the out breath. Make sure to kick her on the head. You're bringing your foot back down. So I'm going into Newborn baby pose. Babies always do this. Children always do this. And then we are back up. <coughs> Stretching out on our back leg. So focusing on trying to get the heel to the ground. You can do this with down dog, but I find you get a much deeper one. And again, it's more comfortable. Or not more comfortable, it is just comfortable doing it this way and get really deep focus on one foot then bend the knee try to raise where the pressure is going to and you should be able to get into your Achilles tendon <coughs> and then ease yourself back down now what we're going to do is this one Particularly, all of them, it's important to uh, stay focused on how you're breathing. But this one is particularly important with the breathing because it has to be in exact order. So it's called cat cow. I'm sure loads of people have done this. So don't focus on so much of making sure that you're getting a stretch. This is one that's more about the movement of things. So we inhale for the cow and we're trying to get our 
belly, movement of our spine. It's all about the movement of our spine. So trying to get our belly down and our shoulders up. Inhale and then exhale. And with the cat, I'm sure if you've ever seen a cat stretch, it's very similar. So you're trying to get your upper back nice and high. Inhale. So next is something called a worm. It's not as a dance movie as you think. <coughs> is it called a worm? I can't remember what it's called. Now, it's been a while since I taught fitness classes. But what we are going to do is you are trying to keep your back legs as straight as possible. Slight bend is acceptable, but try to keep them as straight as possible. Same thing with the palms of our hands. We want to try and keep the palms of our hands on the ground as much as possible, for as long as possible, but they will end up going on our fingertips for most of us. And our knees will bend for most of us, but just do the best you can. So, slowly walking them back. So as you see at this point, I'm already raising my palms up. And once we get up here, we're going to go back down once and then back up again. So, focus on the breathing up here. So, inhaling and then. So, we don't want to bounce. Too much, but we want to move with our breath. It's not really the same thing. Try not to have your toes poke up like this. Try to keep them to the floor. If you can't touch them, it's fine. Just do what you can. Okay, and now walk the hands forward, try to get the palms to the ground as soon as possible, squish the dog. <sighs> Again, remember at every point, maybe you can have your palms to the floor. Don't forget your heels as well. I have a little marker where you touch something. So I'm going to go to the end of the mat. Maybe it's a line in your tiles or a line in your floors. I know, it's very hard, isn't it, Kinky? point so glide your fingertips and try to raise up with your spine vertebrae by vertebrae you're stacking stones here once we get to the top roll your shoulders backwards twice up to your neck and then Facing down and right the way up. 
and just your basic morning stretch that you've seen in anything in the 50s in a cartoon. Driving your sh upper shoulder blades backwards and your belly forward. So your stomach forward, rib cage coming out. And back down again. And now this time, feet inch out to the side. And we're gonna twitch our toes and down. We go pressing our knees out to the side, creating the space for our hips to come right the way down. And then from here, we're going to pry our knees open with our hands. And you know, you can do some of this, do some of this stuff and make yourself feel like you're more zen than you actually are. <coughs> Try not to have your feet out to the side too much. It's okay to be at a kind of a, just like driving 10 and two. Well, actually more like 11 and one. And 11 and one, that's what I want from a Chinese restaurant. Never mind your four and one if you think you're doing well. Okay, and to finish off, we're gonna do where we're pressing in and prying our legs open a little more. Now for me personally, I love this stretch. I find that my groin is really tight, but insert jokes there if you want, but it, you can put a lot of pressure on this and really stretch it out and it feels good afterwards. And if you really wanna get fancy, you can balance yourself into the air like that, showing how much your uh, groin is able to keep, even if you put all your weight on it, it's still able to comfortably maintain. That's not my legs tensing in, that's just the natural level of tension that is on my, um, my tissues in there. And the other thing that you can do is uh, if you put your head on it, this is way too difficult for me, you can go for the really fancy yoga poses. And actually it's a bit of a risk with that dog there. And you can try and put your feet in the air. But uh, that is far beyond my ability. But it's an exercise that uh, we were actually told we should try and learn in Jiu Jitsu because if your opponent if you have side control with your opponent here and you want to get to the other side for whatever reason, then if you yoga pose your way up like so, you can bounce to the other side of them and then maybe get in and get your, your tight grip on them. Maybe you want to focus on your right side and then you can really get control over them. And you can take the morning goop that has built up on her eye and she can't do anything about it. You're in total control. And then get the other eye as well. And now she's clean and she couldn't say a thing about it. So yeah, that's the, uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's, the, that's the class done. And again, moving on to uh, a point where hopefully this can turn into a live streaming thing rather than uh, a recording thing. So, Saturday morning seemed to be popular for a lot of people. That's why a lot of classes are on. Uh, this will be uploaded you know, later into the evening. It's probably not gonna be watched by many people because it'd be distracting from the game if you are Irish or Italian. Forza Italia. And, um, but yeah, if you, if you enjoyed it and you saw like, you know, things that you like, things that you disliked, whether it be like camera angle or, yeah, the dog's cute and all, but get rid of her, um, she's annoying or I don't know, try to add music, try to, you know, we like that you didn't add music this time, anything like that, please uh, give, me, uh, give me a guidance. And apart from anything else, whenever you comment on something, uh, it boosts the uh, YouTube algorithm, so it makes it more popular. So yeah, help out with that if you want. And as always, these are, these are free classes and I'm trying to make them as easy uh, to possibly do at home. I know lockdown is, uh, in England anyway, is now actually has a date when they predict it is gonna be fully uh, open to everyone, which happens to me on my birthday, 
which I will probably be in Ireland for, hopefully be in Ireland for, running uh, the length of Ireland, to discuss later, nothing official yet. And um, yeah, you should still be working out at home though, because what is it, it's, uh, the end of February? That's four months away. So loads of time to be focusing on your fitness, not thinking like, ah, gyms are gonna be open soon. So again, trying to keep everything as uh, accessible to people who do not have gym equipment, but I will be escalating with each class that goes by for people who are more into um, their fitness and have got fitness equipment. Next time I'm going to be doing a class where it is based off of stuff that you can simply make from home and not silly stuff. Like uh, I heard someone did exercise with tins of beans and that sounds dumb to me. But uh, something basic that I'd like people to, you know, pull. I'm gonna pull an artifact here and say like, you know, this is what you need to make your submarine. You need an old sticky back plastic, PVA glue, some yogurt gadgets. Now what you'll need is um, a plastic bag or a bag for life, preferably a bag for life because they are tougher. And then you just need bottles. And so plastic bottles, glass bottles, um, glass bottles probably not the greatest idea, but they'll work if you're gentle with them, if you're careful with them, if you're controlling your weights. And uh, two of them, because you have two limbs, your upper body has two limbs. And <clears throat> what you then will do is just uh, fill them up. You can very easily make quite heavy weights. You can make 12 kilogram weights with uh, two six liter bottles, or sorry, two, uh, six two liter bottles of still water, which you can get from little for sparkling water you can get for 25p a bottle so it is inexpensive and you might already have stuff like that in the house uh, or just milk milk bottles hang on to your plastic milk bottles one it's recycling and uh, two make it fitter so yeah as always if you are interested or if you like that sort of thing then drop the likes and if you're feeling generous to the charity movement that this is all about then you can just click into the description on cure cancer or die trying.com and you can uh, whatever country you are from you can choose the country that you most um, gravitate towards whether it be Australia the UK Ireland or the United States and uh, you can donate within the currencies that are connected to those nations and yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and again for stuff that you'd like to see in the future, let me know. Comment on it.